Good morning. <laughs> I, I'm having a microphone malfunction. Sorry. It's like my ears have shrunk. Or... Well, it's great to be with all of you here. It's great to be with all of you there on Zoom or here on Zoom too. And um, golly, what a totally beautiful day. Big, big happy Father's Day to all of you who our fathers who have been a father figure to someone uh, in your life. And, um, and uh, for those of us who have, maybe it's a more complicated relationship, then I just offer um, prayers of comfort and peace as uh, we try to, you know, figure out how, uh, you know, how to... Uh, make that whole. So, um, one of the things we like to do when we're together is if anybody is visiting us for the first time or is here after not having been here for the first time or has some kind of crazy good news to share, then um, I would just like wel to welcome anyone to uh, stand up. And do, can we get a mic? Is there a, mic, a hand mic for, is there a hand mic up here? Here we go. Does anyone want to say hello, introduce themselves, or um, have some news to share? Uh, yeah, Parm. Oh, hello. Here, we, here we're bringing up a mic. Um, my name is Zaria, and this is my first time. Well, I came here when I was a baby as well. Yay, welcome, Zaria. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining us. You have the best seat in the house, too. How do you arrange that? Anyone else? Anyone else want to? Yes, Stephen. Oh. Well, um, we do have some good news in the family. Um, our daughter in law, Jenna won a Tony Award last Sunday night for A Strange Loop, um, which won Best New Musical. We waited four hours to the last <laughs> bit <laughs> to get her wonderful news. We're so excited for her and her producing partner. She's a producer. This is her first show to produce on Broadway. She's uh, invested in a couple other shows that have done really well. Hades Town, which is here right now in San Francisco, oh, yeah. Oklahoma all won Tony Awards before, but this is the t first time that she actually got to go to the Tonys and got a Tony to put on her mantle in their house. So we're very <laughs> excited about that. <laughs> Thanks for noticing, the, Paul. Yeah, well, it's very exciting. Uh, actually, I just have to say, uh, uh, George McLaird, our pastor emeritus, and I married Kevin and Jenna in New York, and I'm wearing the stole that actually Jill and Steve gave both me and George um, for that occasion. And you, those of you who know George and know me, we're a little bit different. So we put them on, they're the same size, and mine is here, and his is kind of like, you know, tapping his shoes. He's like, uh, you're going to need to get yours hemmed. <laughs> so George and I had a lot of fun with that. Anyone on Zoom who wants to say hi? Just saying hi, and I, I recognize that uh, outfit, Paul. So. <laughs> good seeing you. <laughs> it's good to see you, too, oh. but I don't see who you are. Oh, it's, it's Kevin. It's the person. Kevin? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, you sound familiar. Hey. Hey, hey there. Yeah. Hey, I just recognize that outfit. It's oh, my gosh. Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's looking great. Congratulations, Kevin. All right. Paul? Oh, yeah. Well, this is Patty. And happy and Father's I Day, just, Kevin. This is your first. Patty. Hi. I just wanted to share good news. Hi, my Patty. son. Hi, Paul. Hi, everybody. My son, Kevin Haas, is engaged. My son, Kevin Haas, is engaged. Yes. Woohoo. So, another fun thing to look forward to. 
Absolutely, and our love and blessings to uh, to our uh, our other Kevin and Yvonne. We're very happy. Anybody else? Uh, I this is Robin. I would just like to mention that we had a chance to speak with Tony Fugaro this morning, who is back from the hospital and feeling better. And we are so glad that he is uh, with us on Zoom today. Yay, absolutely. Welcome back, Tony, and happy Father's Day and Grandfather's Day and Great Grandfather's Day. Well, let us now share our joy with each other as we pass this wonderful piece that's bigger than we are and smarter than we are and deeper than we are that unites us as one family, the peace of God in any way that comes to you by, by signal, by form, by, by words, but may the peace of God be with you. Wonderful to see everyone after this service. I'll set up breakout rooms so we can all visit um, in, in smaller groups. Thank you. I think the people who come in person should come 10 minutes early like we do so we can chat, period. Fewer of us are, are showing up early. A lot of people, I just want to say, come at 10, which I understand. But um, yeah, there is there is opportunity before the service to, to come and, and visit with friends on Zoom. Yeah, it's one of my favorite parts. Hello, everybody on Zoom. We can say hello here. It's really nice to see Tony and so glad you're out of the hospital and doing well. Tony Fugaro. Indeed. Thank you. Good morning and welcome on this beautiful Father's Day Sunday. Our today's call to worship was written by Beth Merrill Neal on her blog. Hold fast to what is good. Welcome, friends, to this holy day. We come to offer thanks. We come to sing and pray. Welcome, friends, to this time set apart, a time to remember those we love and holy love, a love that never ceases, a creativity that birthed the universe, 
a hope that cannot be quenched, a love for humanity, a pursuit of reconciliation, no matter the cost, these are the things that are of God. Then let us celebrate God and make our journey together. Welcome to worship. I want to invite you, if you're in the sanctuary, to use the prayer request form inside your order of service if you have a prayer of thanks or concern. And if you're online, if you'll uh, put your prayers into the chat box or, or private message them to uh, Alice and Deal. And uh, just a heads up to the ushers, if, if when you can collect them, you can do a, uh, some recitation of some of them later on. Daddy told me not to ride my bike across that rocky creek. You know it's swift in places, and some it's pretty deep. But hard-headed, full of pride, I went on anyway. And if Daddy hadn't been watching me, I wouldn't be here today. Father knows best. Father knows best If he hadn't been looking out for me I'd be in such a mess I swore from then on I would do just what he said Cause Father knows best Father knows best I remember back in high school, about 16 years old. My friend said, let's go drinking. My daddy told me not to go. Now I'm so glad that I stayed home, cause it turned out he was right. When the papers came the next morning, well, it was there in black and white. Father knows this. been looking out for me, I'd be in such a mess. I swore from then on I would do just what he said, cause Father knows best. Father knows best. Your daddy died. I tried holding back the tears, but I just stood there and cried. 
Now, Lord, you know I love him. Why'd he have to go away? And looking up to heaven, I heard somebody say, Father knows best, Father knows best. I'm always looking out for you so your heart can be at rest. I'll see you through the bad times, just remember what I've said. Cause Father knows best, Father knows best. Good morning. Oh man, what I would give to not wear this bloody mask. Sorry. Good morning. <laughs> oh, okay. Good morning again. Um, today's readings are from the book of Jeremiah, Isaiah, Malachi, and Isaiah. We start with Jeremiah. I thought how I would set you among my children and give you a pleasant land the most beautiful heritage of all the nations. And I thought you would call me my father and would not turn from following me. From Isaiah, for you are our father through Abraham does not know us and Israel does not acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our father, our redeemer from of old is your name. From Malachi, have we not all one father? Has not one God created us? Why then are we faithless to one another, profaning the covenant of our ancestors? And again from Isaiah. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Thanks be to God. Will you please pray with me? Beloved God, we give thanks for this day. We give thanks for this time that we can step aside from the hustle and the bustle, from the pressures and the stresses, from whatever has been ailing us and holding us down, that we can step aside and step into this space. We give thanks for this space. Not that you are any more here than anywhere else, but we tend to come here with our full hearts, perhaps more than other places. We give thanks that we, as a congregation and a community, are bound together not by promises and words, but by care and compassion. That we are not nested in these four beautiful walls, but nested in our hearts and in your heart, stretching across the country, across the globe, and we give thanks, God, for time when the rest of the world seems to spin wildly out of control, time where we get to take deep breaths and have deep thoughts and open our hearts to love even deeper. And so we pray, God, in this time, Soften our hearts and open our minds that we might hear that still small voice of you calling us. And through the mystery of your Holy Spirit, we pray, make the words spoken be the words we need to hear. In your many holy names we pray, amen. So 
If you grew up anywhere within a thousand miles of a Christian, you probably know that Christians talk a lot about God the Father. I mean, it's the very beginning of our most ancient prayer. If you ever sought absolution in making confession, you might have been told, say three, our fathers. God the Father is one of the strongest images for many, many Christians. And so I can't help but tell a joke at this point. And it's not my own joke. And I thought one of you sent it to me, but I was going all through my emails to see who sent this to me. If it was you, thank you. Um, if you've heard this joke, forgive me. Maybe just forgive me or just blanket forgive me. It goes like this. Forrest Gump, the famous uh, movie character, dies and goes to heaven. St. Peter meets him at the pearly gates, which are closed. St. Peter says, well, Forrest, it's certainly good to see you. We have heard a lot about you. Listen, the place is filling up fast, so we've started administering a, an entrance exam. It's fairly short, but you need to pass it before you can get into heaven. And Forrest says, it sure is good to be here, St. Peter. I've been looking forward to this. Nobody told, ever told me there was an entrance exam. Sure hope it ain't too hard. Life was a big enough test as it was. St. Peter assures him, I'm sure you'll do fine. It's just three questions. What days of the week begin with the letter T? How many seconds are there in a year? And what's God's first name? <laughs> so Forrest takes a day to think about it, and he comes back to St. Peter. He says, well, the first one, how many days of the week begin with the letter T? Shucks, that's the easy one. That would be today and tomorrow. And St. Peter's eyes widen, and he says, that's not what I was thinking, but you do have a point, and I, I guess I didn't specify, so I give you credit for that answer. Then Forrest continues. Now, the second one's harder, but after a lot of thinking, I guess the answer really has to be 12. And astounded Peter says, 12? 12? Forrest, how in heaven's name can you say that there are 12 seconds in a year? And Forrest says, well, now let's see, there's got to be 12. There's January 2nd, there's February 2nd, there's March 2nd. Okay, okay, St. Peter says, stops him, I get it. I see where you're going with this, all right. I guess I see your point, though it wasn't quite what I had had in mind, but I'll give you credit for that one too. Let's go on to the third and final question. Can you tell me, Forrest, what is God's first name? And Forrest says, well, sure, I know God's first name. Everybody probably knows it. It's Howard. Howard? St. Peter says, what makes you think it's Howard? He says, it's in the prayer. Which prayer? The Lord's Prayer. Everybody knows this one. They say it all the time. Our Father, who art in heaven, Howard be thy name. <laughs> um, I'm so glad that joke didn't make the SPC email circuit. Uh, so whether or not your father's name was Howard, most people have grown up in cultures and societies that are steaming with male domination. Its messages are so deeply, deeply ingrained in our history, our culture, our relationships, even in our very own psyches, sometimes on a very deep underground subconscious way. Even if we all work very, very hard at undoing all of that conditioning of male superiority, that, that conditioning over millennia, it would still take so many generations just to relaxedly see women and men as truly equal. And on this Father's Day, I wanted to think a bit with you about how our relationship to our fathers, and more importantly, their relationship to us, might have been impacted not so much by the idea of God as our father, but by the equally popular idea that our fathers were God. Now, this varies a lot, and there are plenty of fathers that tried hard and did a really good job, and some tried very hard and were never really able to figure it out, and some seem to have never even really tried at all. But bear with me, as I just take a light survey of fatherhood in a tradition that often bestows special status to its menfolk. Now, for starters, consider the Tower of Babel. 
I'm not going to ask people to identify themselves, but I wonder how many of us had a dad with a real temper. I left out the word bad, but you can imply that it's in there. When I read about God in the book of Genesis or Exodus, I see a father who had some similarities to my own dad. I mean, that whole tower thing is a perfect example. If you don't know it, here's the upshot. Everyone was getting along fine, and they decided to band together and build a really big tower with its top in the heavens. And they said to each other, let us make a name for ourselves. My brother Sam will attest that we built many a tower, a fort, a cave, hideaway. Granted, using sheets and pillows and chairs, we never really were able to make that second floor work, let alone touch the lofty heights of heaven. But even still, sometimes our crude constructions were, for one reason or another, condemned and dismantled by the God in our family. But the Babel story, well, God sees them building this tower and says to anyone who will listen, he apparently had a neighbor or two or a co-worker, because he says, look, they're one people and they all have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they'll do. Nothing will be impossible for them now. Come, let us go down and confuse the language there so that they will not understand each other's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there and the temple and the tower of Babel fell. Now, maybe you never had a dad who was driving the car and bellowed, don't make me stop this car. Or more apropos to this story, dad's upstairs and you're carrying on a bit too much with your siblings, maybe trying to make a name for ourselves. And suddenly you hear a booming voice breaking through the upstairs floor. Don't make me come down there. I mean, for all the times my dad lost his temper, though, I can safely say he never tur turned someone into a pillar of salt just for taking a peek when they weren't supposed to. Though, when my sister found the Christmas presents where they were hidden and showed us all, that might have come close. <laughs> and I have to say, for all his temper, he never sent plagues on anyone. Though, perhaps... If he were able to, he might have done that on occasion. God the Father can be many things when we read the Bible. How many children have feared their fathers as much as any unrighteous idolater has feared the wrath of God? And how can we rec reconcile calling God our Father with the flooding of the earth and the extinction of every living thing save one family and two of everything else. What of the earthly fathers who have deeply internalized a sense of themselves as stand-in gods for their families? If our fathers confuse themselves with God, then it's easy to lose a sense of accountability. But perhaps instead it's the early writers of the book we call the Bible who were confused. Perhaps they confused God with themselves. Their metaphors and their, um, and their origin stories reflected their own frustrations and fears and resentments. Perhaps it was not God that they were channeling, but their own inner demons. Because how can the God who birthed creation want to destroy it? How can the God who brought order from the cosmos, who breathed life into our lungs, who created love, ever want to break her people? No, I think God the Father has long been confused with the humble, good man, our earthly father. Because when we speak in this, about God the Father of a divine source, that's the God who so loved the earth that he would give the thing he loved the most, his son. That's the God the Father who said, I love you. You are mine. I call you by name. 
from Isaiah. The God, the Father, when we pray, our Father is the one that we trust will take care of us, that will heal us, comfort us, bring love into our life, help us to share it. That God is God our Father and our Mother, our Holy Creator, the one God, the one parent of this one family, all sisters and brothers. Will you please pray with me? Beloved God, our Creator, our Mother, our Father, it is so feeble for us to try to say we know who you are. Let us just say thank you for when we look around and see the beauty of creation. Let us just say thank you when we feel that touch of being seen by another person and cared about. Let us just say thank you for whenever our heart comes to life and jumps with joy at the joy of a sister or brother that makes us cavell, overflow with warmth. When we see love of a father and their child, of a child and their mother, of a lover, of a friend, of a stranger we suddenly connect to. Oh God, we just say thank you. Amen. And here we are. Uh, this is our time for the dialogue. And so I invite if you, uh, actually, I think maybe it makes sense. If you're on Zoom, I'd like to invite you to um, unmute yourself if you would like to share a thought on our message today. Zoomers? Okay. Well, if you if someone wants to chime in, you let me know. Uh, those here in the sanctuary, um, anybody want to add a comment or a thought? Yes, Dan, the mic is coming your way. Um, I was, I've never been able to buy into the idea that the male should rule the family, that the wife is basically chattel in there to make home and raise children. Um, Parm and I shared that job, and uh, it was... It was a job for both of us. And uh, I have three daughters, so it makes it very difficult to emphasize the male portion of our, our family, although my dog was a male. <laughs> and uh, I just, I have real difficulty, honestly, with the faiths that emphasize that male as protector and that requires that male to carry a gun. And, you know, it makes it, 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 to me, it makes it very difficult. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. And, and clearly you and Parm did really good work together. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Jill. Good morning again. You know, um, Steve was a fantastic dad, and he certainly shared more than the load of the burden because I traveled quite a bit when our son Kevin was a little boy. And it always warmed my heart to see him at the airport and how he had uh, fathered our son Kevin through the week, and they made it alive to the other end. <laughs> Not that I ever doubted that. But the really heartwarming thing was to see our son Kevin being a father to his little boy, Gavin. It just brought such warmth and he is so much like Steve was to Kevin. Um, 
And is Kevin on there? Oh, there's Kev. Hi, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. just made me really weep to see what a great dad Kevin is to his son. So yeah, I agree, Dan. It, it is a shared job and there's a lot to be learned from both parents. So it's a great thing to be able to have two parents that are there working away at it. So thanks. This is a special uh, Father's Day because we have four Fugar Fugaro, well, three Fugaro fathers and, a, and four sons. Anyone else? This is Geetha on um, Zoom. We... Oh. oh, yeah, Geetha, hi. Good morning. Thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day, all of you together. Um, I had a complicated relationship with my father, who, you know, as my sister says, things are both and. He was difficult and he was flawed and he was tried, he tried, he tried. And then I married a guy who was an astonishing father. He was, man, everything he wished both our dads could have been. Um, and affectionate and loving and hilarious. And we lost him three and a half years ago, as some of you know. And my kids are texting me right now. My daughter brought me flowers. My son's back east and he's asking how we are. And I just texted them that, um, their appa, that's how we say dad. Appa was so proud of them and they were perfect children in how they gave us and showed us love. Um, but what's been so healing and it, it kind of relates to what Jill was saying, <laughs> seeing my husband with our kids and then seeing my son with other people's kids, you know, he's gonna be married in a few weeks and oh man, he, it's joyful. It heals so much to see how hard others, how others in my family try to be good dads and good mentors to kids. So, nice. thank you. Well, thank you, Gita. For many of us, this day comes with sadness. Um, our hearts are with you. I know. Um, shall we pray? Beloved God, we give thanks for fathers. Teach us, guide us through the world. We give thanks, God, for those folks who perhaps never knew their father or for whom it's a, it's a, a broken heart. We pray that in time we might see that each one of us when the whole of our life is taken into account, has probably tried their very best. And God, we lift up to you prayers, thanks, and as Allison shares with us, collected this morning from the congregation. We offer thanks this morning. We offer thanks this morning. For all the wonderful fathers for all the and wonderful guidance fathers. to all the dads out there. And guidance to all the dads out there. We offer thanks for all the we healing and comfort, comfort, healing and comfort from so many people we've been praying for. From so many people we've been praying for. Thanks for all the wonderful fathers. Thanks are. for all the wonderful fathers. Are. Joy for the engagement of Kevin Haas and Joy for the engagement of Kevin Haas and Yvonne. Speedy recovery for Jerry and his new knee. Jerry and his new knee. And 
special healing for him as he recovers in Florida. Continued recuperation for Tony. Continued recuperation for Tony. Healing for Judith Mowry. Healing for Judith Mowry. Names Mary Alice Names. Holmes. Mary Alice Holmes. Dominic Smith. Riley. Dominic Alice. Smith. Jason Riley. and Dee. Jason and Dee. And a special touch to all the fathers today. here for um, Melissa and her family, Mary and Scott, for Mary Elizabeth, for Pamela, for Dave and Jack. Thanks for this gorgeous day, for the healing and for the being here. My daughter and grandchildren, patience and perspective, Tony Figaro's return home, and uh, praise for Sterling's father, praise for reconciliation, and thanks for living in this beautiful place. And again, a special touch for all who need this. We pray, God, for the Summers family in their mourning. We remember Sam's mom, Mary Beth, and her sister Lynn. We pray for Heather's continued recovery, for Dee and Larry, and Nancy and Jim, for Tom and Mary, and for all our loved ones who are recovering, facing challenging circumstance. Cat. And we lift to you, God, prayers that have no words as we take these moments to pray together in silence. O oh Lord, hear our prayers and hear us as we pray the words Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not to temptation. For thy kingdom and the power of glory forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite Elder Jennifer Seaman to read a special prayer for fathers today. God took the strength of a mountain, the majesty of a tree, the warmth of a summer sun, and the calm of a quiet sea, the generous soul of nature and the comforting arm of night, the wisdom of the ages, the power of the eagle's flight, the joy of a morning in spring, and the faith of a mustard seed, the patience of eternity, and the depth of a family need. Then God combined these qualities when there was nothing more to add. He knew his masterpiece was complete, and so he called it Dad. 
We thank you, God, for all those who've been a father to us and to others. And we pray for all fathers everywhere, that they may live in peace and closeness in all their days. Amen. Amen. Well, let's see, looking out over this congregation, it looks like some of you might remember Eddie Fisher. <laughs> Do you remember Eddie Fisher? <laughs> this is our take on his classic song. Hello. All right. Uh, wrote a little something. It all started the day that God whispered your name. I was alone in the house and I heard it clear as day. Jennifer, Jennifer. But I thought to myself, Jennifer, who? I don't know any Jennifer. Not one Jennifer was part of my life. But then my heart spoke. You know exactly who she is. She is a woman with the glorious smile you see week in and week out. She's the one who makes you wonder what is the joy that radiates in her heart that leaps and holds you in a moment of transcendency. The one in the robe and the empty bun and the large cup of coffee and all the cats. <laughs> you know exactly who she is, Dave. Why do you ignore this? Why indeed, I ask myself. It was at that moment that I let go. I'm so happy that I did. I have fallen in love with you, Jennifer Lee Seaman. Beyond what I thought my heart my broken heart could endure. I love you truly, I truly do. Jennifer, love has brought us together today, but it's not the love, our love, that I speak of in this moment. Rather, it's the love that surrounds us. It has been every person in this beautiful church, every person watching us from home, <laughs> every person who has been by our side, including those that are no longer with us. It has been their love, their prayers, their tears, and their hope that has gently, quietly, and determinedly led us here today. So I ask you, in the presence and honor, in their presence and in their honor, will you, my bell, grace me with your hand in marriage? <laughs>
Are there any other comments? <laughs> so, um, hallelujah, God bless you. Um, uh, Jennifer and I had uh, rooms side by side in Indianapolis when we were in there for uh, um, Doris is Dave's mom. Oh. Sam and Mike are Lindy's uh, sister and brother-in-law here. And um, yeah. Jennifer and I spent four days together and I'm like sitting on this because uh, Dave went to a lot of work to get this uh, lined up. So uh, and now, if I might call the ushers forward, and um, as we take our offering, thank you for your support to keep our ministry going. To those of you who are on Zoom or here who want to use Giveify, this would be a great time to do that. Uh, uh, let us share our, our gifts for the, for the, for the good of the, the world. Please rise for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host, Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. Beloved God, we pray that with all that we have, uh, in our hearts, in our minds, in our pockets, in our, in our being, that we use it to bring your word of love and compassion everywhere we go with everyone we meet. Amen. Amen. Hey, I've got good news because we haven't really been doing anything for fellowship, but when you go downstairs to the patio, um, there is champagne and water and... Um, and, and balloons and beautifulness for, um, for toasting uh, this lo lovely family. If you don't know, uh, Jack is going to be a high school junior. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Zoe, what, 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 where, where are you going into school? First grade? Yeah. Oh, man. Fantastic. <laughs> so I'm going to invite the family to come with me as we recess. So, uh, and you can come downstairs and say your hellos and good uh, blessings if you guys go and I will follow you and uh, remember that life is short and we haven't much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey the way with us so be swift to love make haste to be kind remember that the grace of God the love of God the grace of our brother Christ and the sustaining breath of the Holy Spirit let's go is uh, is with you now and forevermore wherever you go may you go in peace and love. And let the people say, Amen. How oh, great to see you, sweetie. You look at you playing those big colors.